Developed in the 20th century, center pivot sprinklers have become a staple on large farms. They can be up to a half mile in length and sprawl across fields ensuring there isn't a dry spot in sight. They custom design each sprinkler for the field it will be irrigating. Then they transform flat, high-strength steel into a water pipe for the sprinkler system. The steel travels between forming tools and then a series of rollers. They curve the steel upwards, taking it from flat to cylindrical. More rollers squeeze the pipe to close the gap. Then an automated induction welder can fuse the joint. A carbide blade trims excess metal from the welded seam. The metal is collected on a spool to be recycled. Next, they douse the pipe with coolant. A plasma torch then moves along the pipe to cut it into 40-foot sections. The pipes fall off the cutting line and roll into a holding area. After the pipes have been inspected for flaws, a team clamps flanges to the ends. These flanges will be used to link the water pipes in the field. They weld the flanges to the pipes. Next, the welder uses a plasma torch to cut outlets for sprinkler heads. He welds a threaded fitting onto each outlet. The water pipe is complete. They'll use dozens of these pipes for a single irrigation system. Next, a progressive die stamps hook plates from steel. Hook plates hold the spans of the sprinkler together. They also keep the sprinkler flexible as it moves. Robots weld mounting plates and other parts to a pipe, creating a base for the sprinkler system's wheeled towers. Then they dip all the parts in molten zinc. The zinc hardens as it cools to give the pipes a glossy rust-proof finish. Next, an employee assembles the sprinkler heads. She screws a weight to the plastic sprinkler body to stabilize it. Then she snaps on a spray nozzle. The nozzles come in various sizes for different applications. Finally, she adds a pressure regulator. The next member of the team lubricates the wheel rims with soapy water. Then he installs the rubber tires. The tire size and tread are selected based on expected field conditions. These tires should allow the sprinkler system to rotate freely. They ship the parts of the sprinkler system to the field. They arrange the pipes on the ground in the correct configuration and set all the structural components beside them. Then they start assembling the immense sprinkler system, beginning with the triangular supports for the water pipes. They hoist the ends of two pipes onto the supports and bolt them at the flanges. They repeat this process until the structure stretches across the field. A crew member screws the sprinklers to hoses. He connects the hoses to U-shaped fittings screwed into the pipes. Next, they complete the electrical wiring. Then they roll the wheels to the end towers and bolt them to the gear motor hubs. It takes a full day to assemble a center pivot sprinkler system in the field. By tapping into an underground source, the system can pump out water through the sprinkler heads. During a drought, this irrigation system can provide a long, cold drink for crops on a hot summer day.